The story takes place in the 23rd century. After an incident with the social scientists, the Earth is now run by military organizations. And in order to be a proper citizen of Earth, one must serve in the military. Those who don't join will be deemed as civilians. Furthermore, citizens are the only people allowed to vote and have a family. Also, due to the advancement of science and technology, humans finally achieve space travel and exploration. That is when humanity discovers an insectoid species of alien they call bugs from the planet of Klendithu. Since then, humans and bugs have been in constant war for territories. In a class, a professor named Mr. Raskzak is teaching his students about world history. The professor asks a student named Rico what is the moral difference between a citizen and a civilian. According to Rico, a citizen accepts the responsibility of protecting the safety of humanity with their lives, while a civilian doesn't. Hearing this, Mr. Rasksak asks Rico if he truly believes in these definitions, to which the young man says he's not sure. After the class, Rico and his girlfriend, Carmen, check out the results of their math exams. Carmen says that the Fleet Academy is very particular with math scores. So, if someone wants to get into their school, they need to be extremely good at mathematics. She goes to check hers, and she's very proud to see that she's got 97% on the exam. When it's Rico's turn, Carmen goes to talk to a friend. Rico takes the opportunity to check his math scores and discovers that he's only got 35%. Then, a friend of his named Carl suddenly shows up and teases Rico for his score. After that, Carl asks how things are going with Carmen. If not well, there is a girl named Dizzy who is in love with Rico and is always waiting for him. But Rico insists that he only wants Carmen. After some time, Rico tests his psychic ability with Carl. It turns out that Carl is a great psychic. Unfortunately, Rico is not, but he's a very good American football player. During a game, Rico takes the win for his team. However, the opposing player named Xander manages to make an acquaintance with Carmen. Seeing that Carmen and Xander get along immediately, Rico gets jealous. Due to this, Rico finally decides to join the federal service for Carmen. At home, Rico's parents try to stop him, but he's determined to join. That night, at the dance, Dizzy waits for an opportunity to steal Rico away from Carmen for a dance. She flirts with him, but Rico insists that he only sees Dizzy as a friend. Upon seeing Mr. Raskzak, Rico asks for some advice regarding joining the service. Mr. Raskzak reminds Rico that figuring things out for oneself is the only freedom a human can have. He then finds her talking to Xander. Seeing this, Rico takes Carmen away from him and the two dance. While dancing, Rico tells her that he will join the federal service. Hearing this, Carmen feels happy for him. She then invites Rico to sign up with her and Carl the next day. At the registration office, Rico signs up for the mobile infantry while Carmen wants to be a pilot, and Carl gets into the intelligence division. Before they go their separate ways, Rico, Carmen, and Carl make a vow that they will always be friends no matter what happens. At home, Rico gets into an argument with his father again about joining the mobile infantry. His mother calmly talks to him, saying that joining the military for a woman is not worthy. Hearing this, Rico gets angry. In the end, his father cuts him off his money and Rico leaves the house, carrying nothing but what he is currently wearing. Afterward, at the departure station, Rico and Carmen bid goodbye. The two promise that they will always write letters to each other. At the training camp, where Rico and the other recruits meet their senior drill inspector, Sergeant Zim. Wanting to test the capabilities of the recruits, Zim asks if anyone wants to try to take him down. One recruit volunteers and gets his arm broken by Zim. Just then, Dizzy suddenly arrives and introduces herself to Zim. It turns out that she requests to get transferred to Zim's unit to be with Rico. After some time during lunch, Rico calls out a recruit named Ace for cutting the line. But instead of fighting, Rico and Ace become friends but also rivals for the position of squad leader. While in the shower, the recruits share their reasons why they join the service. But when it's Rico's turn, he doesn't want to talk about it. Just then, Dizzy arrives and tells everyone that Rico joins the service because of a woman. Hearing this, 
they all tease Rico for being a lover boy. Afterward, Rico records a video of his experience in the camp to send to Carmen. Watching the video, Carmen is happy to see that Rico is making so many friends. Then, she goes on flight training with her co-trainees. Later on, she meets Xander and discovers that he's now an assistant instructor. Carmen is doing well and has already made her name in the Fleet Academy. Meanwhile, the same goes for Rico at the Mobile Infantry. Using their knowledge of American football, Rico and Dizzy manage to take the win for their team during the Capture the Flag exercise. Seeing that Rico has potential, Zim promotes him as squad leader to further test his capabilities. At the barracks, Rico receives a mail from Carmen. Although it starts happily, Carmen says she wants to break up with Rico at the end. This is because she wants to pursue a career in flying and she's afraid that she won't have time for Rico anymore. Rico is very sad and gets emotionally unstable, which directly leads him to a huge error. The next day, Rico's squad partakes in a fighting simulation where they will be using live ammunition. One of Rico's teammates has a helmet problem and he asks him to take it off for repair. In the process, one of the recruits accidentally shoots the teammate in the head. Because of this, the recruit resigns out of guilt and Rico is relieved of his squad command duty. Aside from demotion, Rico is also punished to undergo flagellation by whipping. The squad leader title is then transferred to Ace. Meanwhile, at the ship, the captain wants Carmen and Xander to officially team up and join the crew. At this time, Carmen is starting to develop a relationship with Xander. The two are about to kiss when they are interrupted by a sudden shift of gravitational pull. Upon scanning, they discover that an asteroid from the arachnid quarantine zone is approaching their way fast. They manage to evade the asteroid by using emergency evasion, but it heads straight toward Earth. Going back to mobile infantry, Rico is resigning from the service. Dizzy tries to talk him out of it, but he realizes that after everything that has happened, he's not fit for the service, especially since he joins just for Carmen. Just then, Rico calls home to apologize to his parents and tells them that he will come home. However, their call is interrupted by signal interference. As it turns out, the asteroid that's sent by the bugs hits their hometown and kills millions of people. To make matters worse, Rico's parents belong to the death toll. Due to the incident, the Federal Council decides to completely eliminate the bugs on Klenithu. At this moment, Rico changes his mind and decides to stay to avenge his parents. The Commander-in-Chief doesn't want to allow him to return to service because he formally signed off just a few minutes ago. But Zim steps in and rips Rico's resignation letter in front of the Commander. Meanwhile, an advertisement from the Military Intelligence Division shows how to properly kill the bugs. According to Carl, who's now one of the leading researchers, targeting the bug's nerve stem can finally kill it for good. The scene changes to the fleet battle station Ticonderoga, where a live broadcast shows the preparation of the mobile infantry to attack Klenithu. Rico and the others get interviewed and they are all eager to kill the bugs. Later on, Rico is surprised to see Carmen and then the two talk about their relationship. Carmen insists that she did what she thinks is best for them. Just then, Xander arrives and Rico immediately understands what is going on between Carmen and Xander. Rico is about to leave to avoid any conflict, but Xander talks badly about the mobile infantry. Because of this, the two fight, but they are stopped before it gets worse. Rico and his squad then go straight to get a tattoo to signify their goal to wipe out the bugs. And after some time, they all head out to Klendithu. However, even before landing on the planet, the soldiers are already being attacked by a light plasma. Carmen and Xander do their best to avoid the attacks, but they're still hit. When the soldiers who survived the initial aerial attacks land on the planet, they waste no time and set up their counterattack. Up close, they see that the light plasmas are coming from the bigger bugs. They begin their assault by nuking the big bugs that shoot light plasmas. Then, they all charge and an all-out war between humans and bugs begins. However, upon seeing their comrades brutally murdered by the bugs, the mobile infantry retreats and the reporter covering the supposed raid gets killed as well. Although Rico and his squad save the cameraman, he still doesn't stop recording. This causes the life of the cameraman and another squad member of Rico. Rico gets angry and doesn't stop shooting until he kills the bug. Unfortunately, 
Before it dies, the bug manages to wound Rico in his leg, disabling him to escape. Worse, more bugs are coming his way. The next morning, the Sky Marshal that gives the order for the attack resigns due to his negligence to collect proper intel before launching an attack. The new Sky Marshal named Tahat lays down her new strategy for dealing with the bugs. According to her, to beat the bug, they must understand them. A military scientist suggests that there must be a leadership cast of hive minds in the bug's society. On the other hand, Carmen and their crew manage to survive the hit in space. Upon returning to the station, they find wounded and dying mobile infantry soldiers. Seeing the list of casualties, Carmen immediately searches for Rico's name. And to her shock, Rico is already pronounced dead. Then, it is revealed that Rico actually survived. He is currently being treated in a facility somewhere. It turns out that Mr. Rasksack, who joins the Federal Service later and becomes a lieutenant of a separate unit, rescues him. Dizzy and Ace are also there and they wake Rico up to tell him that he is reported to be dead. At this time, Rico, Dizzy, and Ace just laugh it off. When Rico finally recovers, the three of them join Rasksack's unit called Roughnecks. When Rasksack arrives, he tells everyone that they are tasked with clearing out the bugs on every planet around Klendathu. The next day, the Roughneck proceeds with their mission. After bombing the bugs from the air, they start searching for bug holes to nuke. Everything is going well for the unit until a gigantic bug called Tanker emerges from the ground. The soldiers retreat as the Tanker shoots flame from its antenna. Rico gets on top of the bug and shoots a hole into its skin. He then drops a grenade on the wound and jumps off the Tanker, killing it. Everyone cheers as Rico takes down the gigantic bug. Seeing this, Raskzak promotes Rico as his corporal. Dizzy and Ace congratulate him. Just then, Rico makes Dizzy his squad leader. Later that night, the Roughnecks have their celebration. Rico and Dizzy also finally have their moments together. But their sexy time is cut short when Raskzak alerts Rico about the distress call they got. Fortunately for them, when the lieutenant sees that Dizzy is with Rico, he gives them enough time to finish what they were doing. The next day, they head out to Planet P where the distress call came from. There, the sergeant is attacked by a flying bug. To end his suffering quickly, Raskzak shoots the sergeant. He then tells his unit to do the same for him if he ever gets caught by bugs. Due to their sudden loss, Rico is promoted to sergeant, and Raskzak orders him to lead the team. Upon reaching the base in P, they found nothing but dead and mutilated bodies. Afterward, Dizzy discovers something horrifying. She shows everyone a corpse with a hole in its head. Checking on it, they conclude that a bug sucked the brain of the poor man. Then all of a sudden, they hear a noise coming from a tool cabinet. When they open it, they find a paranoid general named Owen. Then, General Owen reveals that before sucking the brain of his soldier, the bug controls the soldier to call the headquarters. That is why they realize that the distress call is a trap. Just then, thousands of bugs start attacking them. The Roughnecks unit makes a fort in the base and faces the bugs. However, the flying bugs join the fight, making it harder for humans to defend themselves. With his great skills, Rico manages to take down one of the flying bugs, but it goes straight to General Owen, accidentally killing him. In the middle of the fight, Raskzak orders Rico to call the headquarters for help, and he's relieved to find out that Dizzy has already connected with them, and Rico asks for extraction as soon as possible. Outside, more bugs are coming, and it's only a matter of time before they get overrun. When Rico notifies Raskzak that help is coming, the lieutenant orders the unit to regroup. A little later, the airship piloted by Carmen arrives and Xander provides cover to the boarding soldiers. Then all of a sudden, a tanker emerges beneath them and rips out Raskzak's leg. With no other option, Rico fulfills his promise and mercifully kills Raskzak. Dizzy manages to kill the tanker by throwing a grenade into its mouth, but she gets stabbed by another bug in return. Rico and Ace take down the bug and help her get into the ship. At this moment, the ship flies out of the planet. Unfortunately, Dizzy succumbs to her wounds and dies. In the cockpit, Xander tells Carmen that they got Rico on board. Just then, Rico approaches them and orders the bombardment of Planet P. Seeing him again, Carmen cannot believe her eyes 
but is still happy that he's alive. On the contrary, Rico is not happy because he has lost many soldiers already. His request is also denied because the Sky Marshal has different plans for Pete. At the station, Rico and the others pay their respect to Dizzy and release her casket in space. Shortly after, Carl, who's now a colonel, arrives and reunites with Rico and Carmen. He apologizes to Rico for sending the Roughnecks unit on P. He explains that they needed to be sure that there is a brain bug on the planet. Therefore, they are forced to send the Roughnecks even if the survivability rate is very low. But since they now have confirmed the existence of the brain bug, they will be able to set a mission to capture it. Carl then promotes Rico as the new lieutenant and leader of the Roughnecks. Afterward, they land back on Planet P, where Rico meets the new members of Roughnecks. As Rico welcomes them, the bugs start shooting light plasmas in space. At this moment, the ship of Carmen's crew is hit directly and torn in half. Because of this, the captain orders them to abandon the ship and evacuate. On their way to the rescue deck, the captain trips and gets pinned by a door seal. Carmen tries to help her, but the captain orders her to save herself. Carmen and Xander continue on their way and manage to escape through a pod. Meanwhile, Ace notifies Rico of what happens to the ship where Carmen is. Suddenly, they intercept Carmen's radio call for help and Rico plans to send a team to help her. As the pod crashes into a mountain cave, Carmen and Xander get surrounded by bugs. After Carmen alerts Rico about their location and situation, she and Xander begin to fight off the bugs. Yet, it doesn't take long before the bugs incapacitate the two of them. Hearing their scream on the radio, Rico cancels the search party for them, believing that they're already dead. Instead, he orders his unit to continue their mission to find the brain bug. But in fact, the bugs have not killed Carmen and Xander yet. All of a sudden, Rico gets a gut feeling that Carmen is still alive. He orders his unit to continue the mission while Ace and another member of the original Roughnecks named Sugar go with him in searching for Carmen. Going back to Carmen and Xander, they are horrified as the brain bug finally shows itself. Seeing this, Xander simply hands a knife to Carmen. The brain bug then uses its fangs to suck Xander's brain. When it's Carmen's turn, she uses the knife to cut off the brain bug's fang. A bug is about to attack Carmen when it's stopped by the brain bug. This is because Rico, Ace, and Sugar have already arrived and the brain bug sees the nuke in Rico's hand. As Carmen slowly gets to Rico and the others, the brain bug is also backing away. Ace, observing the movement of the brain bug, alerts the team outside where it is heading. When the brain bug is gone, the other bugs start attacking wounding Sugar in the struggle. He then sacrifices himself by triggering the nuke so Rico, Carmen, and Ace can escape. When the three of them finally get out of the mountain cave, they see all the soldiers celebrating. It is then revealed that the brain bug is finally captured. Carl approaches and reads its mind. As he announces that the brain bug is afraid, everyone cheers in victory. Afterward, Carmen and Rico approach Carl. Rico asks him if he's the only one that telepathically tells him that Carmen is alive, to which Carl says it's classified. He then tells Rico that Zim is the one who captured the bug. Hearing this, Rico approaches his ex-instructor and congratulates him on catching the bug and being promoted to private. After the battle, Carmen is promoted to the new captain. Meanwhile, Rico and Ace become well-known soldiers the military organizations begin to advertise to invite more people to join the mobile infantry ready for the upcoming challenges. Starship Troopers is a great futuristic-themed movie, minus all of the cliché future tropes, considering it is made during the 90s. The special and practical effects, especially on the gory part, are also well done. However, the ending just feels anticlimactic and abrupt. After all of their motivations because of the people they lost in the process of capturing the brain bug, the final act just ends up as a rescue operation with a very low cost at stake. Regardless, Starship Trooper is still a fun movie to watch.